Well, 12 News is keeping you fit for life. Today, we're talking to an expert about intermittent fasting. You probably heard about it. It's become a really popular way to lose weight for many people. But how safe is it, and is it for you? Yeah, here to tell us more about it is Dr. Sonal Harder, an internal medicine physician at Dignity Health. Dr. Harder, it is so great to have you here. Thank you for having me. Yes, okay, so this is so popular mm -hmm. right now. So many people are doing it. But for those who are not familiar mm -hmm. with intermittent fasting, Explain what it is. So fasting simply means that you're not eating for a certain period of time. Now intermittent fasting is basically alternating between eating and fasting. So that's all it means. But there are different types of intermittent fasting under that umbrella. So for example, some people do alternate fasting, which is one day of eating, one day of fasting. A whole day? And the whole day. So now some people do a little modified version of hypocaloric fasting, meaning on the days that they fast, they don't eat any more than 500 calories, but the day they eat, they eat a normal diet, normal meals. So that's like an alternate fasting. The second type of fasting is 5-2 fasting, where five days you eat your normal meals, mm -hmm. and then two days are your fasting meals. And again, a strict fasting essentially means absolutely no nutrients at all. So you don't consume oh. any food uh, except that for water. So dangerous to that is That is not sustainable for yeah. most people. Yeah. But most people do five two on the two days, they actually eat up to 500 calories, which seems to be more sustainable. And then the last, the most popular one is time-restricted feeding or time-restricted fasting. You probably have heard many people do this. This is basically picking a fasting window and an eating window. Mm -hmm. So it goes like this. It's 12-12 or 16-8, where the first number indicates number of hours of fasting. So, for example, I tend to do about 14, 10, or 16, 8, so 16 hours of fasting and about 8 hours of eating window. Now, in this eating window, you eat your regular meals. Mm -hmm. So that's the concept. So can I tell you something? Uh -huh. I tried the 16, yes. 16 8. Mm -hmm. I was like an angry wildebeest. <laughs> you were hangry. Beyond. My <laughs> wife threatened to divorce me. <laughs> she said, you're either going to go off of this or we're done. Because yes. I really, I, I get, I am such a jerk mm -hmm. when I don't, eat mm -hmm. and because of our hours you know I don't, I don't we don't get home until late at night mm -hmm. and let's say you have dinner at 7 30 right okay after the six o'clock news it ends at seven by the time you get to dinner at 7 30 by the time you're served and you have food at 7 45 8 o'clock and then by 11 30 when i get home I'm hungry Absolutely. for a little snack before mm -hmm. I go to bed. And who likes to go to bed Absolutely, on an empty yeah. stomach? And the, but the worst is the next day you get up, you want to work out. After you work out, you're super hungry, mm -hmm. your blood sugar crashes, and then you become a jerk. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Now, this is a common complaint I hear from so many of my patients. And that's why I always say what is sustainable for one person is not sustainable. It really depends on your lifestyle, what your work hours are. And at the end of the day, you have to do what works for you in the long run and not in the short run. So starting out with 12-12 is a good option mm -hmm. because out of those 12 hours of fasting, you are sleeping about six to eight hours. Mm -hmm. uh, I did hear that you don't sleep more than six hours, <laughs> but about six to at least eight hours of fasting. So if you just add four more, it becomes 12 hours. Okay. So. And is it true that if you don't get enough sleep, you tend to snack more? Yes. There oh. is a lot of evidence and there's a lot of studies that indicate that That explains you, it. That's a whole nother different <laughs> segment. Yes. Sleep does impact yes. your mindless eating, uh, grazing around. Also, there's data on people who do not sleep well tend to gain more weight. And that probably is related to not eating mindfully. Right, right. So you, you just mentioned some of the cons mm -hmm. about, you know, fasting that people really have to be mindful because it's not for everyone. No. So what else would be some cons that people really need to be mindful of? So some people actually complain of sleep disturbance when they are on fasting. And part of that is they're hungry. They go to bed hungry. Um, headaches are not uncommon. Feeling nauseous are not, uh, un not uncommon. This diet is absolutely contraindicated for women who are pregnant, women who are breastfeeding or nursing, also individuals with eating disorders, mm -hmm. individuals who have kidney stones or diabetes. Yeah. These are people, or if their BMI is a little bit on the lower side, unhealthy side, 
this diet is not for those individuals. So I would say cons would be some symptoms, also some, you know, some people who should not be doing this kind of a diet. Does the body eventually get more acclimated to the fasting? And I mean, I, I think I did it for a week mm -hmm. uh, before I was threatened, ha handed divorce. <laughs> uh, no, but uh, if I had lasted longer than a week, would I have become more used to it? Yes, absolutely. And that's why starting slow um, with 12 and 12 and then getting up to 14, 10 and then modifying on some days. So if you have an event, um, I would not chase a 16, 8 diet on a day that's packed with work, but trying to go slow and steady and understanding your lifestyle is very key to sustaining any sort of lifestyle changes. Well, and I was going to say anything you do that is so drastically different, you got to consult the doctor absolutely. to make sure that it's even a good fit for your uh, life. And absolutely. This is not a medical advice because everybody has individual medical problems that need to be discussed before you go on any sort of lifestyle changes. So, but, oh, go, go ahead. ahead. I was going to say final takeaway, like your number one advice to people who are somewhat considering this. So number one, health is wealth. I say this all the time to my patients. It's your biggest savings account. Okay, so that's number one. Number two is one size does not fit all. Mm -hmm. Just because 16-8 works for some people, it may not work for everybody. Start slow, be smart about it, and definitely work on eating mindfully. Even in the eating window, you cannot just eat processed foods and expect Are Pop-Tarts okay? <laughs> Once in a while. <laughs> I believe in splurge foods and that's, you know, fun. We don't want to follow his food. diet. <laughs> yeah. My son loves Pop-Tarts. <laughs> They man. are good. He's yeah. a good man. Um, it, it, uh, one last question. Mm -hmm. Is there a diet that you recommend if you're not going to fast? Yes. But is there a diet that you like that can be maintained? Yes. Yes. So Mediterranean diet, hands oh. down. We have so much data on how good it is for a heart, for a cognition, for a memory, for maintaining weight. And what is so good about this diet, it, is, it absolutely um, includes whole foods, whole grains, plants, vegetables, lean protein. It allows people to eat variety of foods. It doesn't restrict you, which is how it should be. Some of these foods are meant to be eaten. So I would say, hands down, Mediterranean diet. And Thank goodness we love it. Yeah. We love Mediterranean. And Pop-Tarts once in a while. Okay. Those are treats. Well, I like the Mediterranean hot Pop-Tarts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of olive oil. Yeah, exactly, on those Pop-Tarts. Sonal, thank you. Absolutely. Thank so you great. for having yeah. me. We appreciate you. Good thank to see you. Thank you so much.